Mic check says one, two, three, three, two, one. Mic check, mic check. One, two, three, three, two, one. Mic check says one, two, three, three, two, one. Mic check, one, two, three, three, two, one. Mic test test one two three three two one one two three three two one everyone good? Where are you going to be? I'm, I'm just going to be on Yeah, okay, because I'll look for you and tell me to do that if I need to do it higher. Thank you all for joining with us here today. Uh, my name is Greg Abbott. I'm the governor of Texas, and I want to let you know, Texas grieves for the people of El Paso today. On a, on a day that would have been a, a normal day for someone to leisurely go shopping, turned into one of the most deadly days in the history of Texas. Lives were taken who should still be with us today. 
20 innocent people from El Paso have lost their lives and more than two dozen more are injured. We, as a state, unite in support of these victims and their family members. We want to do all we can to help them, to assist them. We pray that God can be with those who've been harmed in any way and bind up their wounds. We want to express incredible gratitude for all the law enforcement and the swift response that they took to minimize the loss of life by directly confronting the shooter, getting him to disarm himself and be able to arrest him. We could not have done this without the effective law enforcement activities of the El Paso Police Department, uh, by the Texas Rangers, uh, by state, federal, and local law enforcement working collaborative, collaboratively the way law enforcement does work, making sure that swift justice would be achieved. I want the city of El Paso to know and the El Paso Police Department and everybody in this entire community know that the state of Texas provides its full support for this community in their efforts to rebuild. For the country that I know has been paying a lot of attention to this, asking what they can do, I ask that you keep El Pasoans in your prayers. We know the power of prayer and the power that you can have by using that prayer. For every mom and dad, for every son and daughter, we ask that you put your arms around your family members tonight and give them a hug and let them know how much you love them. As I was talking with members of the Texas House of Representatives behind me right now, earlier today, moments ago, they pointed out to me as they showed to me what a video taking place in this community about how people in this community were standing in lines around buildings to give blood, to provide water, to provide support. And as they pointed out, El Paso is defined not by the catastrophe that struck this town. The way El Paso is really defined is the way this community comes together and supports each other to bridge the divide of this catastrophe this happened today toward the pathway of where El Paso will be tomorrow. Texas and everybody in this community, we must do one thing today, one thing tomorrow, and each and every day after this. We must unite. And especially, I want to emphasize the importance of every man and woman, black, brown, white, whatever your race may be, now is the time for Texans to come together, to support each other, to help these families in need, and to make sure that El Paso is going to be able to take a step forward that it needs to take. I've known for more than two decades a man who has a passion for El Paso and the people of this town, and it's your great mayor who will speak next. Thank you, Governor. We appreciate your attendance here under these circumstances. This is a tough time for El Paso, something none of us would have ever imagined. My condolence and prayer, condolences and prayers go out to all of El Paso as we mourn those who have been impacted by this tragedy. Adair and I, with the rest of El Paso, will pray for and mourn those who we have lost. We will remember their lives and honor their memories together. Our community will not be defined by this senseless, evil act of violence. We will be defined by the unity and compassion we showed in the wake of this tragedy. United, our community will heal. 
El Paso was too strong to be broken by a cowardly act like this one. I want to assure, that the, assure the El Paso community that we are safe. We are safe. Thank you to the El Paso Police Department and our law enforcement partners for their swift response and assistance. I will now turn it over to Chief Allen for specifics. Thank you, Mayor. Active shooter call went out this morning to 911 at 10.39 a.m. Police response, first officer on the scene was 10.45 a.m., a six minute response time. From this shooter, we have 20 confirmed fatalities and we have 26 wounded. The ages and uh, genders of all these people injured and killed are numerous in the age groups. The situation, needless to say, is a horrific one. Crime scene is being assisted by the FBI, various law enforcement agencies respond to this scene, the Sheriff's Department, DPS, Border Patrol, everyone that carries a badge in this town pretty much showed up to that particular scene. But needless to say, the scene is a horrific one, unfortunately, because of the nature of the situation. The scene will be in play for a long period. Unfortunately, the deceased will remain at the scene until the scene is processed properly for evidentiary purposes to be gathered for later prosecution. The state of Texas will be the lead agency or entity prosecuting this particular individual. It has a nexus at this point in time to a hate crime. The FBI will be looking into that with the other federal authorities. But right now we're looking at potential capital murder charges for this individual. I'm not going to give you his name right now. He's a 21-year-old white male out of Allen, Texas. And with that, I'll uh, oh, I'm sorry. turn this over to uh, Chief Augustino, who personnel responded as well. Thank you, Chief Allen. Um, I want to highlight what the chief and uh, our mayor was saying. And this incident that happened this morning, it, it activated the whole system and the system was successful. From the first calls that came to 911, getting crews on the scene within, uh, within six minutes, we had hundreds of responders, not just from local, but state and federal, as they said. As tragic as it is, luckily we had no first responders injured in today's events. But it does take a toll. I'd ask that the community keep their thoughts and prayers, not only with the victims and their families who lost their lives or were injured today, but with their first responders as well. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the FBI Special Agent in Charge. Thank you. My name is Emerson Bowie, E-M-M-E-R-S-O-N-B-U-I-E. -E. As a member of this community for the last two years, words cannot express how I feel right now because this community has embraced me with open arms. And I uh, share the sentiments of everyone at the table as to how we all feel for the families and the victims today. Uh, the FBI, as a federal law enforcement agency responsible for a number of jurisdictions, has come in to assist with the other federal agencies as well as state and other local agencies just to provide support in the investigation as this murder investigation continues, as well as look at other aspects of the investigation that could potentially be looked at from a federal standpoint. Uh, the investigation is still early on. Uh, the primary concern, of course, is the victims, making sure they receive the care and courtesy that they deserve. And as we continue to move through this investigation, we will provide updates along with our other partners. We'll take a few questions. It would be best for the FBI to answer that question. Oh, I, first and foremost, I did not call it a hate crime. I said we're looking at other aspects to ensure what potential violations are out there before we can 
uh, label any type of investigation. We have to ensure that the evidence and the uh, precursors are there and they have to be reviewed to make sure that we are uh, executing and moving in the right direction. So at this point in time, we're reviewing the, all the evidence that we have collected so far. We're pursuing other leads. We have mobilized uh, additional offices for assistance uh, in that vein, and we will conduct investigations just like we have in other incidents. Again, no, right now it is a murder investigation. Uh, there is potential for a number of different other types of violations and we're reviewing all the evidence to make a determination as to what potentially else is out there in addition to the violations that have been stated that the local authorities are pursuing. And in that vein, we will assist them in that effort uh, as we work together with state and local and other federal agencies all over the country to do. And uh, we will keep you updated as the investigation proceeds. Right now we have a manifesto from this individual that indicates to some degree it has a nexus to potential hate crime. Uh, I didn't mean to step on the FBI's toes on that, but we are taking this down the road of simply a murder investigation with numerous casualties. And uh, as I said, the state of Texas will be the lead prosecuting agency in this. See, what is the hate crime specifically? Pardon me, sir? Well, I can't get into specifics on that right now because we have to validate for certain a uh, certainty that this was the manifesto from this individual that we've arrested. So with that in play, we still have to be aware of the fact that this person is still entitled to a uh, fair process as far as the law. We don't want to complicate that by making any statements right now that might be uh, tainting the investigation. Would you mind repeating that? Were there any Mexican citizens who were either a fatality or a casualty? We're not able to ascertain that right now simply because hospitals will not release that information to us specifically. Can you confirm the number of locations where the shootings occurred and uh, what types of weapons were being used? Again, those are details that we're going to uh, keep under play right now as far as the investigation goes. Uh, we have one weapon that was put, put on social media, I'm sure you're aware of that, which was a AK-47. Uh, we don't know if those pictures released in social media were the actual individual. So right now, again, going back to the fair process for this individual, we don't want to tank the investigation by matter-of-factly saying things right now. I, uh, you mind repeating that? I know you can't get into too many specifics, but this one individual and the firepower they had, what happened to them? Did they get arrested during the first incident? The capability of the weapon allowed that, and then his intent. And then the location of where he uh, chose was a, a Walmart, a supermarket where people uh, are in large numbers there. So if you're fr firing randomly at people, you can cause a lot of damage. Again? No. Again, uh, the initial information coming in was several suspects. Uh, that information was put out to the field. We had misleading information going to different locations as far as supermarkets. Costco was one location. Dillard's was another. Uh, everyone was responding to that. Social media somewhat influenced that. But in the final analysis of all of this, the suspect was arrested at Sunmount and... Uh, in Viscount, which is on the west side of the Walmart out there where the initial shooting took place. And was he arrested by El Paso police officers? I'm sorry? He was arrested by El Paso police officers? Yes. yes. And, and, uh, and I think the governor mentioned that he disarmed himself on their, on their command. He surrendered to the approaching officers. And, what, and he was still armed at that time? Uh, I don't know that matter of factly, but he surrendered to police upon being seen. Well, where does Jimmy run? Right now we only have one. You're asking for specifics right now. Right now, that's uh, still under investigation. The white man with the manifesto is becoming an increasingly common threat in the United States, it feels like. What can we do to prevent this from happening in the future? 
Uh, that's for a psychologist the answer. That's uh, something that is definitely, I think, in play, but that's uh, beyond my uh, skill sets. I only caught the tail end of that, ma'am. We train for active shooters. We train for active shooter events all the time. And as I've said uh, to my staff and to the department, we train for this, not expecting it to happen, but nonetheless, we have to prepare for it to happen. And we try to get the community as much as involved as we possibly can to participate in these events so that everyone is under uh, understanding what this potentially might cause. This responding to a situation like this to try to make sure it doesn't happen again is a replication of what we just went through during the last legislative session. It was May a year ago when we had the horrific tragedy of the shooting at Santa Fe High School uh, that led to three days of hearings that I conducted at the Capitol to get input from people who are educators, who are students, who are victims of shooting crimes, as well as experts you know, in all different kinds of fields to help us be able to strategize the best ways to keep students safe and to prevent incidents like that from happening again. That led to hearings that were conducted by the legislature before the session began, then additional hearings, uh, and then legislation that was passed by the state of Texas and is now law uh, that includes bill after bill after bill uh, that makes sure that we are doing more than ever before to keep students safe at school. During that time, we did not, as far as I know, uh, evaluate for and plan for an incident like this. That said, I can tell you that perhaps the most profound and agreed upon issue that came out of all of those hearings was the need for the state and for society to do a better job of dealing with challenging mental health based issues. We know that's a component to shootings that take place in schools. I think it's a fact. It probably is a component to any type of shooting that takes place, inc including, for example, the shooting that took place in Sutherland Springs. Bottom line is mental health is a large contributor to any type of violence or shooting violence and the state of Texas this past session passed a lot of legislation and provided funding for the state to better address that challenge. So the question about the manifesto and this emerging narrative that we're seeing throughout uh, our country as to domestic terrorism, which is, you know, and obviously I want to say we don't know. We have to allow the investigation to continue. Uh, I respect the process very much so, but without regard to this particular instance, not speaking about this particular instance, which is still under investigation. But the, the manifesto narrative is fueled by hate, and it's fueled by racism and bigotry and division. And El, it's, it's um, you know, I want to say the national media is watching. El Paso has historically been a very safe community. We've been safe for decades. We will continue to be safe. This is someone who came from outside of our community to do us harm a community that has shown nothing but generosity and kindness to the least among us, those people arriving at America's front door. And so we'll wait to see what happens with this investigation. Once we have a determination by law enforcement, then I think you will see a lot of us coming together to make some very strong statements. But for now, we will let the investigation continue. I want, I, let me just say one thing in closing. To echo what Congressman Escobar said, this person did not come from El Paso. It is not what we are about. We are a special community, and this would not have happened from an El Pasoan, I can assure you. 
Now, you may have, I want to thank the governor and other elected officials who've expressed their support here. And they're also, you all may want to know if there are going to be any more updates on this. And I'm going to let uh, Chief Allen close with that. Uh, we'll do another press conference if we find out anything different that uh, we can expound upon later. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. Thank you.